This video is a continuation of my previous video, which explored some crazy rare events in Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you haven't watched that one yet, do so now. The link is in the pinned comment and in the description. While a lot of things in this game are hard to calculate the exact percentage of happening, we can do our best in investigating some of the most unlikely things that are possible in Animal Crossing New Horizons. We're going to go over all things that can happen that range from things that you've probably seen several times before to things that you haven't and might never ever see until the heat death of the universe. Let's get started. Every day you have a golden spot on your island that you can bury bells into and grow a money tree. If you know the right amount to bury, it can be a decent source of income for you, which is amazingly helpful in the early game. But there is a risk-reward element to it. If you bury anywhere between 11,000 and 99,000 bells, you have a 30% chance of shaking down that tree four days later with three times the amount of money that you buried. Meaning that you could pull a nice profit if you buried a large amount. Problem is, though, is that while 30% is hardly an inconceivable chance, it's still a big risk to bury any more than 10,000 bells, which is the statistically proven best amount to bury in the golden holes. If you don't get lucky and hit the 30% chance, then you will guarantee three bags of 10,000 bells. Meaning that if you buried 99,000 bells in there, you get 30,000 back and make a 69,000 bell loss. Not nice. So if you're a high rolling millionaire, it might be worthwhile to try for the big profit occasionally, but the sensible person would take the 100% chance of tripling your profits if you only bury 10,000 bells. It seems like less reward, but burying 10,000 every day will ultimately get you better profit than burying any more than that. For most people, the most exciting NPC visit is by Jolly Red, the rootin' tootin' highly pollutin' art salesman that peddles his art of questionable genuineness to you during occasional visits to your island. We already talked about the chances of Red's artwork being fake in the last video, but in this one we're gonna talk about the chances that on any given day you will see Red's boat appear on your beach. Let's first understand how Red and his numerous other NPC colleagues are scheduled to come to your island. There are currently nine special NPCs that make rotating visits to your town, of which Red is one of. The other ones are Leaf, Sahara, Kix, Label, Gulliver, Gullivar, CJ, and Flick. But Dagnall, what about Celeste and, and, and KK and Daisy May and all of those NPCs are independent to the nine that we mentioned because of the fact that they all have select circumstances as to when they arrive. Celeste only shows up during Shooting Stars, KK only on Saturdays, and Daisy May only on Sundays. Mabel can be added to those nine NPCs that we mentioned if you haven't got the Able Sisters built yet, but for simplicity's sake, let's just assume that you do. And Wisp is a special boy that can show up regardless of whether or not you have a special NPC in your town because he's a good boy. So we're not counting any of those NPCs. Anyway, while it'd be easy to say that it's as simple as a one in nine chance, it's sadly not. The nine NPCs visit in a scheduled, methodical manner. Let's refer to them as the nine rotating NPCs. Here's how it's determined who visits when. Rotating NPCs can only visit on weekdays, Monday through Friday. Only one rotating NPC can visit each day. You cannot have a rotating NPC twice in the same week. If a rotating NPC did not visit the week prior, it will have a 100% chance of showing up the next week. Meaning that, bare minimum, you will see Red or any of the other 9 NPCs at least once every 2 weeks, guaranteed. And that pattern will continue to repeat, and from what I can tell, only once on average every nine weeks will you manage to get red in back-to-back -back weeks. Meaning that the best estimate that I can offer is that he'll show up on about 7.94% of days. Feel free to debate me on this one though, as this is just my estimate. My logic may be flawed, but I feel as though this is a pretty close estimate. Every island has one of five native fruits, these being apples, cherries, oranges, peaches, or pears. Every island also has a native flower, these being cosmos, hyacinths, lilies, mums, pansies, roses, tulips, or windflowers. If you're starting a new island, hoping for a perfect combination of both fruits and flowers, then the odds don't look too good for you. On average, you need to restart 40 times before you get the combination that you want, as it's only a 2.5% chance. Figuring this one 
one out is simple, since there's five fruits and then there's eight flowers, that's one over eight times one over five equals one over forty. But what if I told you there was less randomness to this than it appears? As it turns out, you actually have a little bit of control over the starting flowers that you get on your island. It's all based on two things, the month that you started your island and the month that you selected as your birthday. Sources that I can find online vary, as some people speculated that's more linked to your zodiac sign rather than your birthday. People in the northern hemisphere get different flowers than those in the southern hemisphere. And whenever we think we have the solution, there's always someone saying, No, no, I started in this month and I got this flower, or this is my birthday and I got, you know, tulips instead. So I really don't have the full understanding of how your birthday and island creation month and hemisphere really affects the flowers that you get, but there is definitely some influence. But assuming that you have not selectively chosen these things, it can be assumed that a specific fruit and flower combination has a 2.5% chance of happening. Just thought I'd mention the fact that flowers aren't completely random since it is definitely something I didn't know, and probably something a lot of you didn't know either. A much easier probability to determine though is the chance of getting any specific song from K.K. Slider when you choose the I'll leave it up to you option. The game will always prioritize songs that you don't have, so let's assume that you have every single song in your stereo. There are 95 songs in the game by K.K. Slider, so it should be as simple as a 1 in 95 chance of getting any given song, right? WRONG! Moron. There are four songs that you cannot receive through KK unless you ask for them specifically. These are Drivin', Animal City, Farewell, and Welcome Horizons. Add to this, you can only get KK Birthday on or around your birthday. These five songs will not be in the queue when you ask KK for a random song since they require special circumstances to acquire. Which makes it a 1 in 90 or a 1.11% chance of getting a specific KK song when you leave it up to him on what to play. I can't find any solid evidence of a set drop rate on golden nuggets coming from rocks in your game. So, you know what that means. It means we have to smack a ton of rocks, record the data, and figure it out ourselves once we feel we have a good sample size. Before we do that though, let's ensure that we do this in a controlled setting. I can only record data from drops on mystery islands. Let's get some of these ready. We can only hit the rock eight times, as I'm not sure if breaking the rock on the ninth hit has a different drop rate than hitting it normally. And if I end up getting Money Rock Island or that one island that has 8 gold nuggets guaranteed, then I'll just skip it because that would throw our data way off. Cool time lapse time. Alright, so I have bashed 164 rocks for a total of 1,312 drops. Of those 1,312 drops, 108 were stone, 656 were iron, 532 were clay, and 16 were gold nuggets. Meaning that I averaged a gold nugget once every 82 taps of a rock. Converting that into a percentage gives us a 1.22%-ish chance of getting a gold nugget on any given rock hit. Given the relatively small sample size, we can assume the drop rates aren't exactly 1.22, so there's obviously room for error. We could have gotten lucky and got 0.2% more gold than expected, if the game only is programmed to be a 1% chance. But until I can find data proving otherwise, the chances of getting a gold nugget from a rock on a mystery tour are 1.22%. You might be like me and assume that the four islands at the start of your adventure are randomly generated, but that's not the case, as I recently learned. If you ever knew someone that shared the same layout of your island at the start in regards to the locations of the rivers, the cliffs, and the resident services, you might be surprised to know that it's more common than you think. User Gaming Chibix on Reddit sourced 95 different island combinations, sorting them by the location of the river mouths, these being two south mouths, an east and a south, 
and a west and a south river mouth. Now, of course, there very well may be more. They said in the post that this is the result of 12 hours worth of generating islands. I generated a few sets myself and wasn't able to find a single one that wasn't already included in the post, so is gotta be pretty close. If you remember your starting island and you don't see it here, then let me know. So I think it's a good estimation to say that this is approximately how many different island combinations that there are, meaning that getting your specific island layout was a 1.05% chance. Keep in mind that stuff like beach shape, rock structures, secret beaches, beach docks, airport locations are all things that are not tied to your island layout and are instead chosen randomly, from what I can tell. Your first two villagers that join you on your island are always going to be a jock villager and a sisterly villager. The math is simple for this, since there are 24 sisterly villagers and 76 jock villagers. It's as simple as multiplying 1 over 24 times 1 over 76. Rounding up to the nearest hundredth gives us a 0.055% chance to get a specific combination of starting villagers. Let's take my two villagers from these personalities, Kid Cat and Renee. No, not you. How many times would I have to roll a new island before I should reasonably expect to find these two as my starters? According to Wolfram Alpha, about 1,819 times. So you better get comfy if you're looking for a specific set of starters because it's gonna be a while. Let me briefly explain the circumstances in which you can possibly get the maximum price to sell your turnips, this being 660 bells. In order to get the max price to sell your turnips, you must have gotten the maximum buying price from Daisy May the prior Sunday, this being 110 bells. Your buying prices can be anywhere from 90 to 110, meaning that this in itself is a 5% or 1 in 20 chance. If you manage to accomplish that, then you have a 24.6%. 7% chance of a large spike pattern. This is the only price pattern in the game that allows for Timmy and Tommy to buy them at 660 bells each. This percentage assumes that you are not buying turnips for the first time, and you are unsure of your previous week's pattern. Both of these things affect what your current week's pattern will be, but again, for simplicity's sake, let's assume that these circumstances are true. So you must roll a 5% chance and a 24.7% chance. It's not too astronomically unlikely, but here's the kick. Assuming you met these two criteria, you still have to roll the extremely unlikely chance of getting the maximum price. Potential maximum prices for the week range from 220 to 660 bells, meaning that your max price can land on or between these numbers. Subtracting 220 from 660 leaves 440 possible maximum turnip prices, or a 0.227% chance that you happen to get 660. So here are the three chances that we need to hit. 5%, 24.7%, and 0.227%. Multiplying these together gives you the extremely unlikely 0.0028% chance. Or a 28 in 1 million chance to get a 660 bell selling price. Assuming my understanding is correct, this means that you're more likely to be born in the French territory of Mayotte than you are to get this price on any given week. But that's all the cool things I can calculate for this one. As with the previous video, I'd be glad to hear some of your ideas for unlikely events that can happen in this game in the comments section. Again, if you missed part 1, be sure to check the pinned comment down below. You'll also find a link to my Twitch channel, where I'm live 6 days a week at 2pm Pacific, 5pm Eastern, with Animal Crossing, Breath of the Wild, GeoGuessr, and more. Thank you all for watching, and for the support as always, and have a good one. Oh, hello there, meticulously placed camera on my wall. As a lot of you probably know, there's a lot of uh, tedious effort that goes into making videos of mine, be it uh, having my villagers pay off a bridge, um, letting flowers spread all across my island, paying off my debts without ever selling anything. Needless to say, it takes quite the strain on my eyes. That's why I got this guy to help.
The BenQ Screen Bar e-reading lamp is an essential tool for the workstation. Whether it be gaming, work, or leisure, you need something that can help you stay focused and relieve eye strain. Its 15 brightness levels and 8 color temperatures help to give you optimal lighting no matter your situation. No rearranging necessary as it all works and with nearly every monitor as well. No need to worry about glare or any setup at all. Just easily attach it to the top of your monitor and you're good to go. If this seems like something for you, you can find the links down below to purchase this product from Amazon or BenQ's website. Thank you BenQ for supporting my work and for making my job a lot, lot easier.